Right now, there are over 5 million birds leaving Australian shores. Every year these birds, some barely bigger than a sparrow, embark on an epic 13,000 kilometre flight to the Arctic. That's the equivalent of doing 309 consecutive marathons with only one or two drink stations along the way. And what's more, once they have nested and raised their young, they turn around and do it all again. Welcome to the final episode of Farewell Shorebirds, coming to you from the Farewell Shorebirds Pleasure Dome, also known as Melbourne Waters Edith Al Seaford Education Centre. Now on the last few weeks we've learned about shorebirds. We've learned where you can find a shorebird, the importance of wetlands, how we track the shorebirds, uh, what a flyway is, and the importance of the Yellow Sea as a shorebird habitat. Now the birds are on their last leg of their journey, heading from the Yellow Sea to their Arctic breeding grounds in Siberia and Alaska. Many of the birds we have been following have all made it to the Arctic and will soon start nesting. Redneck Stint, the Bar-tailed Godwit, Red Knot and Ruddy Turnstone. Siberia and Alaska are the perfect place to raise chicks due to the abundance of food available during the brief Arctic summer. Now what I find most mind-boggling of the whole journey of the migratory shorebirds is once the adults have raised their chicks, in most species they migrate back to Australia leaving the young in the Arctic to fend for themselves. And then those juvenile birds manage to come back to Australia to the same wetlands as their parents without any guidance. And one person who needs no guidance is BirdLife Australia's intrepid reporter Steve Davidson. We've sent Steve this week to the Yellow Sea to report on the migration that's happening there. Steve, how are things going up there? Hey Sean, yep, look, uh, this, uh, this once was a, a, a really good wetland. Um, there's, uh, there's nothing here now. Okay, thanks Steve. You can find your own way home. It's important to remember that these aren't just our shorebirds. The journey of the shorebirds encompasses 22 countries and has inspired artists from right across the flyway. Melbourne-based artist Kate Gorringe-Smith tells us about a unique artistic collaboration that draws on the migration of the shorebirds. I'm Kate Gorringe-Smith. I'm a, um, a Melbourne-based printmaker. The birds, um, they never stop. They, they always have the pull of the two homes. They always have their heart in two places. It's such a beautiful, poetic story that it, it, it inevitably captures people's imagination. So I, I put out a call for artists. I wanted to get as many artists as possible, or artists from as many flyaway countries as possible. So I ended up with 20 artists from nine different countries all making prints inspired by the flyway. So I've got these beautiful artists all producing prints, they've all sent them back to me. It's an original print so they've hand printed every single image. The flyway prints are currently being mailed around the East Asian Australasian flyway to simulate the bird's journey. Once they arrive back in Australia they will be on display at Melbourne's Federation Square in September later this year. Kyoko is from Japan and is another of the artists from the Flyway Print Exchange. A few years ago I saw Kate's work in Port Jackson Press. That was the first time I encountered the, you know, shorebirds. And when I, when I read her work, it kind of got me thinking. It was, I thought, was a really good metaphor for, you know, immigrants, which is a lot of people here including myself, and he sort of makes me, at that time, you know, ask myself, sort of, um, why did I live, and why, you know, why do I live here apart, you know, um, separate from my family back in Japan. Um, it, it sort of got me thinking about um, the whole reason why I travelled to Australia. And then, um, you know, last year, um, I got an information from my friends that Kate's doing this exchange for your project and um, I was 
delighted to be part of it. Once the shorebirds arrive back in Australia, they don't just stay in the one location and will often move about the landscape, including across borders. This has inspired local artist Liz Dunn on her own artistic migration. My project called Flyway, which uh, was developed in 2012 um, for the Next Wave Festival here in Melbourne. So I took a month-long field trip from Melbourne to uh, my hometown in Maryborough in Queensland and stopped along the way at about 16 different birding sites to collect video and sound footage. The project itself was in the form of an audiovisual bird watching tour. It was built for quite an intimate small audience at a time uh, and every member was given a pair of um, binoculars and a set of headphones with a sound score made of music and also um, field recordings of birds that were taken from the sites um, developed by a composer and sound artist Lawrence English. They also were given binoculars to view a series of um, video artworks that were installed in different um, screens, existing screens mostly, throughout the city. Uh, and the idea was that, that there would be a sort of a dissolving of what was the video art and what was the sort of natural cinema. This just in, the latest satellite readings for the little curlew we have been tracking have just been received. After spending a week feeding up in the coastal wetlands and rice paddies around the Philippine village of Plarendel, by May the 3rd it had headed off again, arriving 1900 kilometres to the north in coastal China, where it is expected to rest up for a fortnight before making a final push to its Siberian nesting grounds. One of the champion flyers of all the shorebirds is the ruddy turnstone, a bird that was caught and tagged with a geolocator in Flinders in southern Victoria, was found to travel up to 27,000 kilometres each year on its migration. And the really interesting thing about this bird was it would fly up the East Asian Australasian flyway to its breeding grounds in Siberia, then move across to Alaska and then come across the Pacific. And in different years it would stop in different locations. For instance, one year it stopped in Vanuatu, another year it stopped in New Caledonia. Not a bad life. Here to tell us more about the ruddy turnstone is shorebird expert Danny Rogers. Ruddy turnstone. Okay, ruddy turnstone is the only shorebird in the world that has been found eating human corpses. Uh, a couple of uh, Dutch biologists found this happening in South, Af South Africa. They were watching a turnstone. What's it eating out there? And a dead guy on the mud flats, which they found fairly harrowing. But uh, when they recovered from their shock, they uh, actually thought, well, we might as well write it up and submit it to a journal, only to have the paper rejected because it had already been published before. <laughs> Uh, but they don't normally eat human corpses. I've never seen them do this myself, but they are very resourceful foragers. Now the ruddy turnstones have demanded a right of reply. So here's Brian Dorr with one of their representatives. I'm here today with ruddy turnstone. Good evening, Brian, yes. Yeah. Nice to see you. You're looking well. Thank you. Yes, yeah, very I'm, much alive. I'm very well, thank you. Planning yes. to stay alive too, course, I would say. Yes, of course. Yes, yes absolutely. Well, um, just give us a yell if you're feeling a bit off colour or something at some point, won't you? Well, I will, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Why? Oh, no, 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 no reason at all, Brian. No, no, no reason. I have to say, funny name, uh, Ruddy Turnstone. Ruddy Turnstone? Yeah. Well, a lot of bird names are descriptive, Brian, and oh, ours really? certainly. Yeah, yeah, Ruddy is just a healthy colour, Brian, a reddish brown colour. Oh, well, colour you do look well. Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm as fit as a Ruddy Turnstone, Brian. Mm. And, uh, and I suppose you turn stones too. Well, we do, do. exactly, yeah. Brian. Very perceptive. We turn stones with our beaks, Brian, or seaweed or something. We get food from under them. Yeah, no stone unturned. No stone no. is left unturned, mm. as far as we're concerned. Now, you're a shoreline bird, aren't you? We are a shoreline bird, Brian, but we prefer a stony shoreline perhaps to a sandy shoreline. If you lived on sandy beaches you'd be a sandpiper wouldn't you? Well that's a very interesting point. We used to be a sandpiper Brian, yeah. And you look a bit like a dotterel as well. You're very perceptive Brian. We used to, we're sometimes called a sea dotterel. And you're migratory? 
We are migratory, yes, Brian. In fact, we're about to go. Oh, really? Where are we off to where? Well, we go to Siberia, Alaska, northern Asia, Brian. You go around the Pacific as well, don't you? Oh, well, yeah, love the Pacific. You ever mm. been to the Pacific yes, Islands? I have, yeah. We love the Pacific Islands. We went to 22 countries last year. Now, you're about to go to Siberia at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, we are. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I believe you can follow this whole trip. Well, on, you can. Uh, you can follow it. At, how do you do it? Well, we follow it by doing it, Brian. You can follow it on BirdLife Australia. Right. Yeah, they're, oh, they're following the whole thing, including the Pacific, Brian. You want to come on the Pacific part, you're oh, going to need a deck chair, yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe uh, a broad-brimmed hat. Yeah, some sunnies. Yeah, some sunnies. A little yeah. bit of 30 plus wouldn't go astray. Terrific. Yeah. Well, I hope it all goes well. Bring some sensible shoes. And that's about a wrap for this first series of Farewell Shorebirds. As you can see, the Melbourne winter is really setting in. But where the shorebirds are heading to, there'll be 24 hours of sunlight for them to raise their young. Thanks for registering to be a part of the first series of Farewell Shorebirds. Everyone who has registered with their address will receive a limited edition copy of our award-winning Shorebird ID booklet. Don't forget to head to our website and also find out how you can be in the running to win a pair of fabulous Swarovski binoculars. And don't forget to look out for the Shorebirds on their return in the spring. Until we see you next time, thanks for being part of the journey.